I'm interested in you saying it's hard to do that transmission plan, which is all about their renewable energy, climate target, et cetera. Do you need a lot more migration to do that? No, I think what you're going to have to do is have some alignment across all the construction projects that are on foot. So we look after a lot of workers in civil construction, in tunnel construction, and also in resource construction as well. And if you have a look in terms of some of those projects coming up, there is a big peak coming through with those projects already underway. Now, if you bring forward all of the uh, transmission line construction, again, it's another key area that we look after in our union, then we can start to see that there's going to be huge demand on construction workers going forward. Have you is... spoken to government on that? Are they yeah, we've started the some conversations with them on that. Are they listening? Have they got any answers? No, absolutely. I'd say unlike the previous government, I think they're realistic to reach out and hear from all sides in terms of what the problems are. We bring a unique perspective, which is being able to identify across a broad range of industries around the economy to see where there's some issues and where there's some pinch points. And this is a good initiative. We want it to work really well. We want our members to have good, paid, secure jobs. What we know is there's a huge amount of work coming forward. The ACTU is coming to the... And you're the Vice President, or a Vice President, is coming to the summit with some reasonably radical ideas. They want energy prices fixed. They want a windfall tax on companies with big profits. You've spoken about that in the past. Could any of these see light of day? Well, I, you know, dare I say, following the lead of Boris Johnson here, um, but... We said uh, with the energy crisis taking place in Australia, if they're, particularly the gas companies are un unable to find any meaningful solutions in place to make sure that Australians have enough of our own gas at affordable prices, then we should look at a windfall profits tax. I'm not saying that is something that we want to absolutely drive as the first centrepiece of our policy direction, but it needs to happen. Energy prices Government right Government will never do that, though, after the mining tax experience, will they? Well, I think you'll find the Treasurer move very quickly to say that's something that they're not looking at at the moment, but it's not going to stop us, nor the ACTU, continuing to push forward those ideas. Will that be a big theme at the summit, then? Well, at, at the moment, like, I think that the single biggest challenge the Government has got is solving the energy crisis. I, I think it genuinely sits just above nearly everything else. That, and frankly, making sure that our members get a decent pay rise. But... There are so many businesses right now who are struggling with extraordinarily high energy prices, both electricity and gas. And I think unless we find some of those solutions, then the great future about our manufacturing renaissance and rebuilding the manufacturing sector, I find it hard to see how we deliver on it. If we don't have energy as a competitive advantage, we've got a gap to get there, and it's going to be really hard for the government to navigate through that. What do you think needs to happen in terms of Australia accessing more gas? So I've been a big supporter in terms of allowing more gas. I think the Victorian government, uh, frankly, should have been doing a whole lot more over the last couple of years, have been very vocal on that. Um, also, in New South Wales, um, at the moment, it takes the best part of nearly a decade to try and get in a project up and off the ground. It's ridiculous in terms of the steps that we need to go through for environmental approvals and generally regulation approvals in this country to get these initiatives up. We're certainly supportive of getting more gas out. We should be exporting gas to the world long into the future, but we have to make sure that we actually keep some of our own gas for Australians. We're the only gas-producing nation in the world that does not keep a proportion of our gas to benefit our domestic users before sending it around the world. Is the trigger enough to do that? The well, government might use. At the moment, the trigger that Malcolm Turnbull designed is, you know, as strong as a wet lettuce leaf. And what has to happen is uh, the Minister for Resources, Madeline King, needs to have a look at reforming that to include both a price and supply. At the moment, it only deals with supply. The trigger's not been properly pulled before. It's not come into effect and it's under review at the moment. You need a solution that deals with both. There's no good just saying, the gas company saying, oh, here you go, here's a couple of cargoes of gas available on short notice. We need to make sure that it's there for the long run and it's delivered at rates that are cheaper than what our friends over around the world are purchasing our gas at. At the moment, we are paying more for some of our gas than our friends in Korea, than our friends in China are getting. Now, you've advocated for a while for a look at nuclear energy. The opposition seems keen on that. Chris Bowen thumps the table and says it's the most expensive form. What do you say to that? Well, I think Chris is right at the moment. I think, unfortunately, I've been a very big supporter of the nuclear industry and remain so in nuclear energy. I think it's got enormous opportunities to provide baseload power. But the race for technology change at the moment is leading heavily towards hydrogen renewables. And I think it's getting harder for the industry to find a solution to operate here in Australia as it goes forward. Um, that being said, and certainly still remain very much committed to it, but I think the headwinds are working against it right now. 
And just finally, Dan Walton. We've seen some union leaders in the past have very successful careers in politics. Bob Hawke and the like. Bill Shorten, perhaps less successful. Do you have any political ambitions? No, I don't. And I've got a long book of bets uh, that many people uh, have joined in on, and I'm welcome to take yours as well if you'd like it. <laughs> Dan Walton, thanks for your time. Cheers, Andrew.